Okay, we have um, actually anticipated many of the rules that we'll talk about for electric field lines already, but I'd like to encapsulate them into a concept so that um, when you're on a, stranded on a desert island, then you know how to calculate those electric fields. There's a, there's a lab, uh, an electric field mapping lab, that will allow you to actually play with this hands-on and experience what these electric field lines look like. Electric field lines or lines of force provide a map of the electric field in the space surrounding electric charges. So back to our original thinking, if you have a positive charge here at the center and you put a positive test charge here, then the force of this center charge, Q, on that positive test charge, think of it as positive, is repulsive. It's going to repel it. That means that both the force and the electric field are in this direction on that positive test charge. But now you can kind of forget about the positive test charge and say, well, uh, electric field lines always come out of positive charges. Just like we talked about before. And that's, that's the exact diagram that we had with the little green blob and the electric field lines coming out from that. So this is in fact what the electric field lines look like from a positive test charge. They just come out. Um, I might ask, where is the electric field the strongest? Well, you say, I can calculate that. Let's say the distance between this center charge Q and some test charge Q0 is R, then the, then the electric field is going to be at that position of that test charge, KQ over R squared. So the smaller the R is, the greater the electric field is. So the closer in you get to this charge, the bigger the electric field is going to be. In fact, uh, the electric field is KQ over R squared, remember. Uh, if R goes to zero and you're bringing that test charge right into where the, the central charge is, the electric field blows up. It gets infinite. It's one over R squared and R is zero and you get one over zero and that's infinity. So here, are the, these are the regions in here is where you're going to get strong electric fields. And out here, that, where it's close to the charge. But out here, it's going to be weak, weaker. The farther you get away, the more R increases, 1 over R squared decreases, and the electric field gets weaker and weaker. So the observation here is that where these electric field lines are closely spaced, the electric field is strong. We'll see that in one of the... Um, concepts. Now, electric uh, field lines are always directed away from positive charges, but toward negative charges. How do you know that? You can go back to the test charge concept. You can say, well, okay, let me put a test charge here. Let me let the test charge be positive. Usually test charges are positive. That makes good sense. So this is a positive test charge, a negative central charge. Um, well, those two attract each other. So the force on that positive test charge has to be toward that negative charge. The electric field is always the same direction as the force on a positive test charge. So that means that the electric field must also be in that same direction. The electric field is in the direction of the force on a positive test charge. And that's a positive test charge attracted toward the negative. So the uh, bottom line is the electric field lines are directed um, toward this negative charge. So they always come into, into these negative charges. With the stronger electric fields uh, here in the vicinity of the charge and the weaker ones out here. Now this one, if you want analogies and, and analogies help you, this is just uh, what you get with the uh, gravitational field of the Earth. So if this is Earth, and you ask about the gravitational acceleration, well the gravitational acceleration 
G is 9.8 meters per second squared. And what's the direction of it? Toward the center of the Earth. Down. So if you're over here on this part of the Earth, and you have a mass, and you ask what the direction of the, its gravitational acceleration would be, well, it's toward the center of the Earth. So the gravitational field looks like this. It's exactly what this looks like here. So it's like as if the Earth were acting as a negative um, charge. And um, here, the gravitational field lines are replaced by electric field lines. And the Earth's mass is replaced by a negative charge. Uh, well, if we're interested in not being in Kansas anymore, we can take a look at what happens with two charges. And this is going to be the subject of the of the lab, the electric field mapping lab. We talked about the fact that that a uh, gra <laughs> if you have two sources of electric field, then the net electric field is going to be the sum of those two uh, component electric fields. So if we um, if we ask about having a positive charge here, this is called an electric dipole field. We have a positive charge here and a negative charge here. And we just look and say, what's the electric field at this point due to this positive charge? And you say, well, I can do that. It's directly away from that positive charge, just like that. So that's the electric field due to that point charge. Well, what's the electric field felt at this point, from this negative charge, forgetting about the positive charge for now, and you say, well, I know that. It's, it's along a line that comes straight out from this negative charge and passes through the point in question. And it's toward the negative charge. It's that direction. So this is E1, charge due to this um, I'm the electric field due to charge one, the positive charge. And this is E2, the electric field due to this negative charge. Well, what's E1 plus E2? We well, can do, you can add them uh, head to tail. You got E1 here, take the tail of E2 and place it at the head of E1. That says E2, if you can't read it. And then the net electric field is, in fact, to the right. And that's, in fact, what you see with these lines here. As you're getting closer to the po positive point charge, the electric field lines look just like they do for a single point charge with no other charges around. And the reason is, those those fields are so much stronger when you're really close to that point charge, and they get weaker and weaker as you get further away. Same thing over here. This looks just like the, the electric fields due to a negative point charge, all pointing radially inward. But then out here, you add the two together, and you can see that this, this um, electric field line that started out here gets bent over, and now it's pointing horizontally in the direction we just figured out and then it comes down and into the southern one. It's a very beautiful, it's the same uh, field that you get for a dipole magnet. Looks just the same. Uh, two positive point charges. Well, if, they're both have the, if they both have the same magnitude, then right halfway in between them, like we've seen in two examples previously, the electric field is gonna be zero here. Yeah, you can't even read that. Electric field equals zero, right here in this center spot. And what we're seeing now is um, if we look at this point here symmetrically between the two and ask about the direction of the electric field, 
Well, what's the direction of the electric field at this point due to this point charge? And now you're getting to be experts at it, and you can say, well, hey, it's just along that line. It's like that. What's the electric field direction at this point due to this point charge? You say, hey, I can do that too. It's directly away from that point charge. So those are your two electric fields, and you add those two vectors up um, using the parallelogram method and the electric field, the net electric field, is in that direction. It's not horizontal anymore because these two charges are both positive. So it points off in that direction. You get this very, very different scenario for two, two charges of the same sign. All right, so let's state the rules for electric field lines. Um, electric field lines begin only on positive charges or infinity. You can also have electric field lines that begin at infinity. Here's, uh, here's a case of that. This electric field line, where did it start? Well, it started way out here and came in from infinity into this uh, negative charge. You can also get um, electric field lines that head out to infinity. So they can start on po they start and begin on positive charges and head out to infinity, or they can end on negative charges or at infinity. So that's what this we're talking about here. Electric field lines begin only on positive charges or at infinity. Begin at positive. They end <laughs> on negative charges. So that is a typo. They end on negative charges or infinity. I'll fix that on the PowerPoint. Electric field lines never intersect. So you have to add the two electric field vectors together to find the net electric field, and the electric field lines never intersect. Ne never in any of these places do you see uh, an electric field line crossing over another electric field line. It can't happen. And the reason is, that would give two possible directions for the force on a positive test charge. It's like nature wouldn't be able to make up its mind. And so they can't intersect. Electric fields are strongest where the field lines are closest together. We talked about that. Uh, the number of electric field lines leaving or entering a charge is proportional to the magnitude of the charge. So we talked about that too, uh, but not in these, in these specific terms. So, um, well, I'll give you an example to, to show you what I mean by that. But another way of stating this uh, is that lines begin and end on equal amounts of charge. And we'll give you an example of that as well. So if you want a mnemonic for these five rules, uh, I was talking with my wife last night and she came up with this one. Uh, begin, education, immediately, stop napping. Stop napping. However you want to <laughs> remember it, uh, however you want. Uh, those are the five rules. All right, so which of these is um, the, the true configuration for electric field lines for these four charges? In each, each of the four cases, the charges are always the same. You got a minus Q here, you got a plus 4Q here, you got a minus 2Q here, and a minus Q here. What do the electric field look, lines look like? And let's see if we can find violations of these rules and which ones of these uh, scenarios actually conform with the rules. All right, are we okay with these two lines coming into this negative charge? Yeah, um, electric field lines end on negative charges. We're happy with that. Uh, are we okay with these lines coming into this um, negative 2q. Yeah, we sure are. They're coming out of the plus 4q. What about this point here? I've got an electric field line that comes out here and over to here. I've got an electric field line that comes out here and over to here, and these two lines cross. That's an intersection. That ain't allowed. No go. All right, what about this one? Um, same kind of scenario that we talked about here. And, um, but this one violates rule five, where the number of lines entering or leaving a charge is proportional to the magnitude of that charge. 
So what I mean by that is that if, if I have uh, one line coming into this negative charge, Q, then I better only have one line coming into this negative charge, minus Q, but there's two. And so it doesn't obey that rule. The, the number of lines into a charge of the same negative charge ought to be the same for any other charge in the system. So there's a violation right there. Same thing here. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight lines emanating from this plus four Q charge. Um, whereas I've got five coming into the plus into the minus two. Those ought to be half, the number coming into the minus two ought to be half the number coming out of the plus four Q. Why? Because the magnitude of this charge is half of the magnitude of this charge. The absolute value of this is half of this one. So that one's a no-go. Um, what about here? I've got uh, two lines coming into this minus Q, two lines coming to this minus Q. I've got four lines coming into this minus 2Q. Does that make sense? Well, yeah, it has twice the uh, magnitude of the charge that either of these two has. So if I have two lines coming into this, I better have four lines coming into this because its charge is double. And how many lines do we have coming out of the plus 4Q? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So I've got four lines coming into this one, eight lines coming out of that one. This one works. Violates all the rules. There's no intersections. They uh, come out of positive charges and into negative charges. Um, what about this guy here? Um, and what's the problem with him? Electric field lines are not going to be uniform between those two charges. This looks like a uniform electric field. The, the field is going to be stronger here and here than it is here in the middle. It should be weaker because it's farther from the charges. So this one should have looked like that one. Here, since the electric field lines are closer to each other, the electric field is stronger here and here, but the electric field lines are farther away here, and therefore the electric field is weaker. So it's, uh, it's this one here that works. We'll give you some practice on, on some problems to get, get the hang of these. You get a lot of power knowing these rules. All right, consider the electric field lines shown in the drawing. Which of the following statements correctly describes the situation? The electric field is due to a positively charged particle. I don't think so. It looks like there are going to be two particles here. Are they both going to be positive, both going to be negative, or are they one going to be positive and one going to be negative? And you can go back to those uh, diagrams that we did for the electric dipole and for the two positive charges, and I think have your answer here. You could put a positive charge here and a positive charge here and create an electric field that looks like that. Alternatively, um, and, and in that case, the electric field lines would all be coming out, away from those positive charges. You could also uh, satisfy this uh, diagram by putting negative charges here. So if you had a negative there and a negative here, in that case, all the electric, line, electric field lines would be coming in toward the, char the, the charges. So it can't be this, it's gotta be two. Uh, can't be this either. It's due to a positively charged particle and a negatively charged, but can't be that either. That would be a dipole field. That's the one that looked like this. So, and the electric field is due to particles that are both charged either positively or, neg or negative, positively or negatively. And there's your answer.